Hello my soccer universe and yeah, welcome to what happened in Serie A and in the Coppa Italia on the weekend and in the midweek. Yes, I decided to push this video a little bit back because I had the impression that everything that happened in the league starting especially on Friday with the Milan teams was very much conditioned by what's uh, happening in the Coppa Italia. Partly I was right, but it did not come to the um, conclusion that I was kind of wishing or hoping for. And I'm not talking results-wise, I more or less talk performance-wise. Uh, same thing goes a little bit for Fior, for Fior, Fiorentina, you know, kind of the... If you look forward too much, the rewards are not really paying off. And I think for Milan it goes even one step further, as we'll see. Because I could see in the derby that at the end, uh, in the cup derby at the end, they didn't want to go all out because there is an even more important game in the title race coming up this weekend when they play against now leaders Napoli. But it was a typical round where again the top teams almost struggled in many ways and this time it was really the top two Milan teams. But Napoli and Juve actually got out of jails uh, this time, 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 time around so... All fine here. Before we look into the games, uh, just a few things to note. I have a Ukraine jersey up here uh, that I want to display now in all videos for at least this week. And then uh, in addition, I this will be a rather bare bones video. I have don't have my usual editing environment at the moment ready since my computer is in repair. Uh, and I have not found a good alternative, so there will be no additional graphics, but I will make sure to at least mention all the relevant results. So uh, just to let you know about that. Also, please bear with me. I'm more or less pulled an all-nighter for work, so I might not be all that straight up <laughs> there. In any case, well, let's go to Serie A. I mean... Milan Udine. I completely forgot about that game. <laughs> and I mean, the kick of time was anyway not very amenable to me. Uh, it's what I feared. Udine is a pesky opponent that always gets something at the San Siro, it seems. And I gotta say, yeah, you take the lead through Leao, it all looks fine to me. And then you end up conceding a goal and Yes, the performance was not great, but the, there was a handball on the goal. And the referees didn't see it, didn't call it back. And Milan again get uh, punished for basically getting too many penalties last season. So uh, it, it's annoying at this point. And that even Maldini came, 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 came out and complained about that uh, speaks volumes. Uh, in my mind because uh, it just cannot continue like that but uh, this should not paper over that the performance was not, not great you were again you had a 1-0 lead you need to score a second goal and just you play overall all right but then seemingly something's missing and especially in the box you just cannot get it done and that's not good Full disclosure, when I saw that result, I thought, yeah, and now Milan is out of the title race, like I did when they drew against South South Natana. Well, good thing is that Inter seem to be in a bigger funk. Uh, I, I still think that Inter is the most talented squad. They have so many options. However, the problem is they cannot score at the moment. Lautaro Martinez is a shadow of himself. Uh, Edin Dzeko is not that scoring as well. I mean, all those players, it just doesn't click at the moment. Inter is in a real rut. I think so many tough games at at once really really took a toll uh, at them, and yeah, it seems like this is now the deciding uh, factor of the season. Where if they can weather this storm and they're not too far behind, I think I can very well see Inter running away with it. And uh, Milan, that's the one thing. Milan at this point is not taking advantage of the weaknesses of Inter because I honestly don't think that Napoli is the big opponent. Napoli is a great squad, a more talented squad than Milan, but I always feel that Napoli, although as we'll see, they did this uh, reason, uh, uh, they did this this week. I really have to say that I don't trust Napoli, but I don't trust Milan either, and for that reason, I think it's Inter. But nil nil, uh, no, all the gold result. One team that we probably can start trusting a teeny bit is maybe Juventus, although they're also a little bit up, up and down against Empoli. And Empoli is giving a hard uh, game to almost any big opponent that's come, 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 come to there. Moise King gives them a lead, and uh, Sukhovsky 
gets an equalizer, but just before for the half, a Cuadrado assists Vlahovic, and Vlahovic himself, then after the uh, break, makes it 3-1. At this point, settling things for Juve. Uh, Empoli, though, pull one back, but uh, it was an important Juve win, and, you know, if Juve keeps up, if the top are faltering, and Juve, can, Juve might as well just claw themselves. I don't think they will get back in, into the saddle race. But uh, the danger is there. That is all. It's so um, it's so weird in many ways. Um, another game that was uh, definitely conditioned by the cup fight was Sassuolo against Fiorentina because I think Fiorentina didn't all go out. Traore giving Sassuolo a lead, and then uh, Fiorentina even going a man down because Bob 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 Bonatura got sent and sent sent off by uh, just saying arguing with the ref too much. You know, typically Italian re referee. But still, uh, they get an equal as an 88, and, and you think they can steal a point at Sassuolo. This was kind of a game where um, Fiorentina, if you get something there, you maybe keep Sassuolo at bay, but in stoppage time, the Frel gets a winner for Sassuolo. Big win for Cagliari, and of the teams that I have, I think it's overall, uh, they are the biggest winner. I mean, uh, Cagliari have been re uh, getting results and probably move slowly out of the relegation zone um twice taking the lead in at torino and this torino side wasn't is not that bad this in they're not great but they're not that, that bad so a pretty big win also uh things are not looking good for venezia 3-1 loss uh away from home to hellas verona um roma say what you want about Mourinho and uh whatever the one thing i have to give roma they're not giving up they always score late, and it's again, uh, yes, they played a half, full half with a uh, man more, but a very, very, very late pair penalty, and Roma get a win at Spezia. And, you know, this is just maybe a confidence builder. I think uh, one has to see Roma under Mourinho a little bit more as a long-term project, although I have my doubt. I still have my doubts. I don't trust Roma. I don't trust them. But, you know, if you keep getting results, at least shows that you have... Um, at least uh, the squad is never giving up. And that's also something we can for once say about Napoli. Napoli, to me, is one of the inconsistent, most inconsistent sides in Serie A, period. And you always could rely on Na Napoli if it counts their flaking. But in a wonderful game that I didn't see, yeah, I decided to watch Barcelona. It was not a bad game, but it was a rather one. But I thought Lazio Napoli. Now nah, let's not watch it. Uh, let's do something else for once. Everyone is saying about uh, Barcelona so much. And then, uh, to be honest, Napoli and Lazio were rather disappointing in midweek in the uh, Europa League. But yeah, the game itself was really entertaining with chances on both sides. And uh, Lazio very well could have taken an, uh, an equalizer lead or whatever. Um, but it was then Insigne scoring his first goal from open play uh, this uh, season. So that was already, already a biggie. Uh, Insigne had an, another goal called for offside, but um, um, Lazio fought themselves back and with a wonderful Pedro shot, take the equalizer just before uh, the end of the game. And you thought, yeah, 1-1, one, one, na na Naples again, uh, may have missing up, but then uh, a wonderful Fabian Ruiz shot curls it. I mean, this had a, a, so much curl and so much swing in, in there. Gets the equalizer in the 94th minute, uh, not the equalizer, the winning goal for Napoli. And Napoli take now the lead in the table. So a uh, really, really big win for them. Uh, the question is, will this character carry them forward? And we'll get the answer already on the weekend. But before that, we also have uh, had Atalanta making short shrift out of Sampdoria with Pajalic Kobmeyer. I mean, this was a game that for a tiny fraction of the second half, you thought that Sampdoria maybe could get back. But as soon as Cope Maynard, who scored a brace, makes it 3-0, uh, uh, the game was done and does. And then, then Miranchuk uh, scores a fourth. Rather impressive stuff from At uh, Atalanta to also get themselves back into the game. Uh, as for the next weekend, before we go to the table, then Coppa Cop Italia. Just a couple of interesting memories. Roma Atalanta. Remember the great win for Roma at At Atalanta? Could be time for, for revenge. That's a big one. I would expect that Inter for once will score goals and beat Salernitana. It's already on a Friday because of uh, Champ Champions League. Cagliari Lazio. Slipper game. Slipper game because Cagliari is really good at the moment. Uh, as I think is Fiorentina against Hellas. Then. Um, 
you will have a relatively simp a simple game as Spezia, but then it all points towards Sunday evening. 1v2, although Inter has, has a game in hand, I think this could be a rather decisive game for the season. It smells like draw to me. But honestly, for me, if Milan are serious about being title contenders, this is a must-win game. You need to get this one because you would win the head-to-head. Uh, uh, against Napoli. This is the most important and I'm afraid uh, it might not happen because you lost already at home to San Siro. If you win at Napoli you at least could get the head-to-head -head back. That would be uh, the goal. So other than that you need to score more points than Napoli and the way things have been going. Nah, nah, nah. I think if there's no, no win Milan just have to secure a top four finish. I think uh, to me this is that decisive um, but we have to see where things, things are going. So how, uh, how likely is it now to become champions and so on? I still have Inter on top with 60%, Napoli 24 and Milan 15. So kind of you... Even itself out, I'm, I'm rounding up. So this is the tall top three. I thought there are a minuscule chance for both Juve and Atalanta. However, you know, Juve having seven points back. You know, seven points is not all that much, but it's a still uh, uphill battle and you're still in the Champions League, so it might not be uh, enough. On the bottom, Kali really, really looking uh, good, good, good at the moment. Uh, my model gives him only 10 times of the chance. Venezia is the one in trouble. Spezia could also be uh, drawn in, but Venezia now with a game in hand, which they need to win, but at the moment they are three points off safety. They probably need, uh, and then to Spezia, four points. So it is a rather tight uh, race there in many ways. Uh, and then we're going to the Coppa Italia. What can I tell you about Milan Inter? I mean, it was just three week, weeks ago that Inter completely dominated Milan and lost that game. This game had a different flavor. I mean, you know, away goals rule count in the Coppa Italia semi-final, which is idiotic. Um, but the game itself, it was not as fiery and Inter looked completely stale. Milan could easily walk into, in, into the box and then they were overthinking things. I think uh, just purely by the way it went, I think Milan would have deserved a win in this one. However, uh, I have to say, if you cannot put clear chances away or if you are looking for the extra pass and so on, you don't deserve the win either. And uh, Inter, I really I really thought they're going to nick it in the end, uh, which did not happen. So, nil nil, I think no one is really uh, too upset about this. You keep the tie open. Uh, the second leg is at the end of April. So, maybe you just can wait around a little bit. And, yeah. So nil nil, it finished. Uh, there's really not much more that I can say about it, except that Milan missed a couple of really good chances that you just have to put away. I'm sorry about that, and uh, especially Rebic annoyed me. Uh, the problem for Milan is that I think the squad at the moment picks itself a little, a little bit, and thus gets overplayed. It will really be good to have Slatan back. And it would be really nice to have a little bit more mobile defenders. And I think uh, bringing Brahim. Uh, in the second half as a sub substitute, uh, it plays much more to his strength. Similar story almost Fiorentina against Juve, where Fiorentina really was the much better, had a much clearer chance, especially through Icone, uh, probably would have deserved the win. And what happens? And you know, Fiorentina fans are probably uh, all with red faces this uh, morning because Juve at the very end wins through an on goal. It is absolutely uh, soul crushing this defeat because you put so much in you did everything right you just do not put the ball in, in the net and you at the end comes back and bites you and it's exa especially you where you have already i mean i call this fiorentina against fiorentina north because you have so many fiorentina players fiorentina players anyway don't don't don't, don't like you and now with them uh, buying all the players it gets even worse soul crushing defeat for fiorentina i gotta say so yeah still it's not quite done yet, but I, one would say that you was in the final, and then we have to see who of the two Milan teams will make it in. So yeah, that was it from me from Italy. Uh, please let, let me know what you thought, thought about the action. I, As I said, the big title clash. No, it's not even a title clash. It's stay in the title race clash. Is on the weekend between Napoli and Milan. Slightly nervous, but you know, uh, Milan have, been, have done well at Napoli. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please add anything below. Subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.